Welcome back to another episode of the Words of a Warrior podcast. I am your host, Daryl Chambers. Today I have, well, he was, he was my wrestling coach when I, when I was um, training a bit in the lovely, lovely sport of wrestling. But today we have a great coach and a former wrestler, Ranjit Singh. He runs and heads, he's the head coach for Wolverhampton Wrestling Club. He's been a coach, and correct me if I'm wrong, for over 20 years. Um, years that saw a lot of champions, um, great British champions come through this wrestling club from a small city called Wolverhampton. Um, we've had over 20 great British champions come through. Um, we've had a world junior, world silver junior medalist, a junior European champion, two Olympians. Um, anything else you want to add to that? Anyone else that's came through? Yeah, Commonwealth medalist. Commonwealth medalist. Twice. It, it goes on, it goes on. And I want to take down competition too, so we can add that to, um, we can add that to the list, right, Ranj? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> we can add that. No, that, that's great. So, um, Ranjit, so let's start, let's start with this, really. I want to start to talk about Wolverhampton Wrestling Club because not a lot of people know the real history of the club. And I don't know that much, but I know it's been running for a long time and you lot have been doing great things in the community. When was the Wolverhampton Wrestling Club established? Okay. Um, my, when my father and his two brothers, my uncles, when they came out from India in early 60s. Early 60s. Yeah, yeah. They used to be wrestlers back home. Okay. So when they came over here looking for work, etc., they carried on the tradition of wrestling. Um, at that time, obviously, it was, it was quite difficult to, to find premises, etc. Yeah. yeah. So they started off in... Um, in their house in the living room. Oh, just like a normal just living normal room? Living. Okay. That's how they started, yeah. <laughs> Until they found premises, uh, you know, and, and then the club started growing again. Uh, and, you know, when we were younger, they just sort of brought us along with them. And then that's how we started. <laughs> wow, incredible. So how much people was in the living room wrestling at the same time? You could quite easily get 20 odd guys in there. 20? That's a big yeah, living was, room there, right? Well, it was, it was just a case of having to make do with what you got. So that's taking it. turns and, you know, um, training hard that you know they'd find anywhere to train that's that's interesting yeah. so was a lot of the people that were training with your dad it was your dad right that you dad, said, yeah. yeah was a lot of people there from india as well was it people from um the uk at that at that time there was a lot of influx of, of people coming over from okay india. so yeah a lot of the guys were sort of like you know newly over or they'd only been here maybe a year or two etc okay so yeah most of the guys they knew from back home and that's how they stayed together and carried on training together. Because it's a big sport over in India, right? It's massive. It's huge. Yeah, huge. It's one of the national sports. So ah, interesting. If you're a wrestler in India, a good wrestler, you're sort of like a celebrity over there. Really? Yeah. Oh, and was your dad a pretty good wrestler? He's a decent wrestler. and They used to train hard. Okay. Yeah, so we won a lot of the uh, local regional competitions. Nice. Yeah, same as my uncles as well. So had a big family sort of tradition in wrestling. Okay, so how old was your dad when he came over here? Uh, that's a good question. <laughs> you need to ask I, him. Also, yeah. <laughs> oh, when he so when he came over, he did get into tournaments and he was competing. Then. Yeah, he still was competing. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so I guess growing up then at the time, um, I guess grow, you were seeing um, these grown ups wrestling in your living room, and is that how it kind of was? It, 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 they started off there, and then obviously, then um, uh, when we actually took up wrestling uh, as kids, we. Uh, they took it to a community centre okay. in, in a little town called Wilnall. Um, oh, Wilnall, yeah, nice. Yeah. Um, and it was just a, a, basically it was a classroom. Again, it was packed with guys. You wow, just that's to, incredible. With an old uh, sort of like a canvas kind of mat in there. And that was it. It just went from, yeah, it went from there. And then we moved on from there to uh, bigger premises as the club expanded. Okay. Yeah. No, so did you start taking part when it was in the classroom in Willenor? Is yeah, that well, when no, you that's started? That's when I started. Yeah. Oh, how old was you when you started? Um, I think I was uh, pretty late for for in wrestling terms. I was twelve. Okay, interesting. So did you not have the inkling to, to try it before that? No. Um, we used to still train. Yeah. But that was when I sort of like got brought into wrestling at a serious level okay got yeah, you yeah. okay okay uh, my brothers are like a little bit younger than me so uh, we all really kicked off when we went to the first competition ah which we will get to which yeah. we will get to right that's okay it's, how old was your brother then you, you mentioned your brother how old yeah uh, he's uh, no sorry how old was he when he started wrestling he was eight. 
Okay, so, so he started kind of at like a, a good age. Okay, got yeah. you, got you. Okay, no worries. All right, so you say it really started when you went to your first competition. So how old was you when you went to your first competition, Rick? Um, 15. 15, yeah. so you're training for about three years three at the years, time. Yeah, and yeah. Do you remember how you felt going into your first competition? We were quite quite confident. You was yeah, nice. because of the the level of training we were already doing. Well, yeah. Remember, we were as kids training with older guys. Yeah, all so, the time, right? Yeah, they used to beat us up every day, kind of thing. Okay, so, got, so, so going tough, in tough there, he's like, yeah, yeah. We thought kids are not going to be any harder <laughs> yeah. than training. Where was your first competition? It was in Derby. Derby, okay. Yeah. How did it go? Let, let us know. Um, the three of us competed. Um, uh, this was against. We 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 moved to um, another coach for extra training in Birmingham, a guy called uh, Tony David, a really nice guy. He actually told my dad not to let us compete yet because we weren't ready. Okay. And knowing my dad and my uncles, they were like, don't worry about that, just throw them in. Yeah. So uh, the the competition was the qualification for the European Junior Championship. Okay. So three of us entered. me, I finished second in my weight. Nice. So top two would qualify. Nice. So I finished second. Um, another friend of mine, he finished. Um, he finished second, and my brother finished first. Nice. So that was Success. our first competition. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but I remember, I remember when we walked into the actual hall um, where the competition was being held, and he all went quiet. <laughs> <laughs> There's a big sort of like group of us that walked in. Okay, and, okay. And I remember because Wolverhampton Wrestling Club at that stage was because of my, my father and his old Indian tradition. Yeah. And stuff, yeah. Um, most of us were, were Indian. Got you. But there wasn't a big group of Indian wrestlers <laughs> seen before. Got uh, you, and, you know, that, to that kind of level. Yeah. Wow. So, so it was good. Did you, did you or your dad ever face, I guess, a certain prejudice coming into? Wrestling, or do you think it's just about the wrestling and there's no politics attached? Um, like I say, I remember that. I think I, we walked down the center of the uh, the, the two matches, yeah, and uh, you all went quiet. Yeah. I think it's more <laughs> the surprise of oh, wow, yeah. there's like new guys yeah, coming yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, um, But I, I can't say I've seen any racism or, no, or, good. Any, or any prejudice against us at nice. all because we, we were just there for the sport, and you know. It wasn't anything like us against them. Yeah, 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 yeah. You just there it to just compete. To compete. Didn't yeah. matter who yeah. was there. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Could have been yeah. Asian. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't matter. Okay, interesting. So, you've won that competition. And remind me, you qualified for what by winning that? The European Junior. Championships, European Junior, which were being held in Manchester. Manchester, and in the same year, so not too far. Same away. year. It's only sort of like uh, about two months later. Okay. Yeah. So did the intensity of training increase? Did everything kind of, did you focus more? Or was you already pretty focused? We were already pretty focused. Okay. Yeah. So it was just, we wanted to sort of like, you know, go there and do compete well, and yeah. do well. Yeah. yeah. How did it go? Um, I f- lost out on the bronze medal. Okay. Yeah, I remember that fight, obviously. Yeah. Like, like you would, yeah. I, um, I lost 5-3. Okay. So yeah, just, so it was not that. bad, yeah. Um, and my brother won it. He won his, okay, he won, yeah, nice, yeah. nice. So he, he won the gold medal. And your brother's what, like 12? Um, he was then, yeah. About 12, 12 yeah. yeah, okay, yeah. nice. And what about the other person from the club that... He, he got injured. Oh, so he yeah, didn't get yeah, to compete? Yeah, yeah. He, no, he competed, but he got injured in his first fight. Oh, race. so, so he, he couldn't to continue. Out. Yeah, so he couldn't continue, ah, which is a shame. Okay, but after that, that kind of spurred you on, did it, to kind of say, you know what, I'm going to come back and take this sport seriously? From then on, from the first competition, it was just like, we want some of this. <laughs> 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 yeah, you, you know, you get a bug for it, for fighting, yeah. uh, you're competing. It was just a whole ball game of getting up in the morning, training in the morning. Yeah, training in the evening, just wanting just, more and more. Just yeah. on it, on it, on it. Yeah. And your dad, is your dad coaching you at this time as well? At that time, yeah. Yeah, he yeah, was coaching. Yeah. And my, my, my uncles as well, yeah. And your uncles, yeah. okay. So they was like the head coaches they in the club coaches, and it was yeah. really like yeah. a, a close-knit family. Yeah. And did you see a lot of other people from different ethnicities coming into the club at the time or is it still very um, Asian-driven? No. Then? Then? Yeah, when you was about 15, 16. Um, I think because... I think because of the Indian community that had come over from like sort of um, India at yeah. that time, it became more of a, um, it's like a community sports yeah. club. Yeah. So everybody wanted to get uh, involved at that time. But but saying that, we had a lot of other 
uh, nationalities come train with us. Did, okay. Yeah, so it was open to everybody. It wasn't yeah, you course. know that only for Indians. It was for everybody. Of course, of course. But um, I think we understood the meaning of a wrestling as a traditional sport more so. Uh, that's why I think it's like really sort of um, uh, inspiring to us. Got it, yeah. Um, yeah, my father done it, my uncles have done it, and they've passed it on to us. That's it, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's, so it's you, kind of a bloodline sport. Yeah, you know? and you're continuing in like a legacy, yeah, right? Yeah, so yeah, that's so. it. Like that, like that. All right, so did you enter that competition the next year as well? Did you do the derby again the year after? Um, from then on, it's become a blank. <laughs> <laughs> we just, yeah, that, we, we just kept, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember the first then, one. It just, we just kept just entering competitions. Yeah. Yeah. Every okay. competition that came along, we entered. Talk us through, at that time, what training would kind of look like for you. At that time, I think it was more... Uh, it, it was more sort of, you know, the brute force. That yeah. You just have to be the, the toughest guy kind of thing. Yeah. Um, it was an all-round um, sort of training circle. Um, if, if you were to ask me what one thing would be the most beneficial... I couldn't give you an answer for one thing in wrestling. Okay. It'd be literally everything. The whole package. Yeah, the yeah. whole package. You have to do bits of every single thing and put that in a, in a weekly routine or, okay. or program. Um, uh, the training would be, uh, I'll just run you, you know, the normal day. Yeah. It'll be sort of uh, getting up in the morning, having your breakfast. What time would you get up? Depending, uh, I mean, I'm talking about when I was working now, yeah. Okay, yeah. So, so if I was, if I had to go to be work, say I had to go to work for like eight o'clock in the morning, I'd get up sort of like half five, Dedication, six o'clock. Yeah, yeah. Get, get my hour or so in, mm -hmm. and then it might be just to run for that morning. Um, and then come back, shower, etc. go to work, and then in the evening we'll be back on the wrestling mat again. Yeah. And so we'd fit in what we could. I mean, the days I was starting work late, my work was basically fixed around my training. Okay, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, know, you had to do that. Prioritise yeah, the training. Yeah, yeah. So how old was you at this point when you were working as well? Um, I was 18. Okay, so you're so 18, you started working, started but work, still yeah. thought, you know what, wrestling's at the forefront. It's, yeah, yeah. So the days I, I was working, say, starting mornings later, I'd go for the run, I'd go um, do my weight training, um, if I if I had another training partner, we'd go for a little techniques in the morning, yeah, wow. and then work throughout the day, make sure I'm eating properly in the evening, go back on the wrestling mat. That's dedication, so man. So it was just what you wanted to do, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's your goal, was... and you wanted it, yeah. Exactly. But we were in a in an environment where everybody wanted it. That's it. So it helps. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Iron sharpens iron, right? Yeah, yeah. Love so, that. Love that. Love that. Love that. So where are you training at this point? Are you still in over in Willow? We were training. Um, at that time, when I started work at Bilston Community College, ah, I moved yeah. the actual wrestling club to there. Bigger premises, gym was there. Yeah, was, I guess a, more visibility, maybe? Yeah, we'd get a lot more sort of flow through, coming through the college. And of course. then you could obviously... Um, yeah, you know, yeah, target, target like that. Have, yeah, target the groups or, or, or individuals even. Did you find that though kind of conflicted with the ones that really wanted to train hard and trying to get the commercial side in? Because I guess on the commercial side, you could bring in a lot of people through the training, but then you had people like yourself that just wanted to get gritty and just wanted to go for the top. How, how was it balanced? And who was the coach at this time? As uh, my father and cousins got a little bit older, they passed the responsibility on to myself. I just okay. walked into the role. <laughs> okay. kind of. It wasn't, you know, who's going to take on the club as such. I just... Just naturally just, naturally became. just became the leader of the club and had to organize the junior squad the senior squad and they trained daily training competition wow. sort of uh, you know fight camps everything and still training yourself and still training myself so <laughs> okay. yeah ideally it, it would have been better for myself um that i was just sort of concentrate on my, my own training of course, yeah of course. But when you take on the whole package the whole ball game then i had to uh, balance everything out again yeah, yeah 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 of course i wanted everybody to succeed just like i wanted to do myself 
So nice. it just that's, became natural. That's a, yeah, that's good. That's, you just naturally kind of took this role of um, responsibility yeah. for other people, yeah. but still following your dreams and still working. Still so working it's hard. all kind of, yeah, but yeah. it was all coming together. Funnily enough, I know that my dad trained with you when you was at um, the Bilston College. Yes, yeah, so I, this is how I this know. is how this is happening, everyone. See how yeah. things come full circle, yeah. My dad was doing football at the time and um, I know he said that the fitness there was, was crazy. Yeah. And then he told me that probably... 15 years after and I came to the training think at the time bear in mind and I'll come back to I know we're off topic right but I'm thinking I'm pretty fit I was doing MMA and, and I'm, I'm I went to wrestling and I was destroyed I was absolutely <laughs> destroyed I brought two of my friends with me and I literally couldn't work but I loved that feeling I relished it I, I hadn't felt that feeling in forever the training is, is, is a whole nother thing but this is what I like that training like I like being really pushed to the brink when when I'm saying on the commercial side, I know some people was just there for the fitness. So think of you, you're somebody that wanted to fight and, and get further in your training, but then you've got 20 people coming in saying, oh, we just want to do fitness. Yeah. How do you, how would you balance that in a class? It was a learning curve for me also because the, the like I say, the, um, the hard sort of core members of the club, they all were competing at that time. Yeah. So, you know, we'd go to the competition, there'll be like sort of 20 odd guys co going from the club to compete. Nice. And then, yeah, to keep the club, obviously, the numbers up and, and you know, to build uh, uh, for the future of the club. So, yeah. Then I'd, I'd sort of, the new guys would come in and and experience the the whole sort of uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. training. <laughs> experience. <laughs> the experience, the little body experience. <laughs> and then, you know, to keep them sort of like coming in, they'd have to soften up the training a little bit yeah. for them guys because it's not for everyone. It's not. Yeah. So so I'd I'd make a point to tell them, look, do what you can, mm. and then if you need to break or whatever, then just take just, one. Just, yeah. yeah just because relax. these guys aren't stopping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The guys will compete. Okay, there, got yeah. you. So you didn't soften it up too much, but you no, just but said, you, you know had what? to there's be. A, yeah, there's yeah. a way out. Yeah, there's because a, a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting because I guess wrestling is one of the few places I believe that. It's still kind of an old school training style to it, like a real gritty getting down and doing stuff. While now I think it's a lot of, well, I'm not saying now it's a, it's a lot different, but compare the training when you started to training, and I mean in general, not just yeah. in wrestling, yeah. training now, like what is the difference in the actual training and the mentality of people training? I'd have to give you the experience of myself okay, through yeah. wrestling, yeah, you make it, okay, yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, then we can relate it to it everywhere else, yeah. But um, the way we train, like you just said, it was the old school way of training. So you had to be the fittest, the yeah. strongest, you know, to, to to be able to compete. Talent takes you so far, and you can you drill your techniques. You obviously go to get better, but there was no excuse for not being the fittest and the mm. strongest. So the old school way of training was not just to toughen your body, but mentally be yeah. tough too. So the only way to do that is just hard training, hard training, daily, in, out. It becomes a discipline. Um, it, it gives you a lot of a lot of good things will come out of, you know, you're you training hard. You, yeah. you show a lot of respect to the guys who are on the map with you, with your coaches, with, with just generally with people. Um, you're humble. Yeah. And that you know, the higher up you go, the you. I found that the higher up you go, the more humble the person is, because they don't need to prove anything to That's anybody. That's it, right? Yeah, they they know you know what they're doing. <laughs> yeah. You know you know where you are. Yeah. So, um, and going back to just that commercial bit, we didn't pay any attention to that in the early days because <laughs> it's not like social media now. Yeah. Where you know you just got Instagram, Facebook pages, and everything. everything. Yeah, you yeah, can post yeah, anything, yeah. and it'll go. From hundreds and thousands of people will yeah. see it. Yeah, in those days, it was word of mouth. That's it. It was literally, you know what? This is that the place this you is want to train. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. If you want hardcore, yeah, yeah. then come down. So I mean, we 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 trained everybody from um, judo guys to I did a few years of judo myself as well. Okay. So from judo to boxing to kickboxing to. Um, 
everything. Everything. Yeah, yeah, everything. yeah. Guys used to like sort of compete in athletics. Everybody. But the new, the conditioning. The conditioning was like top mental level. Mental and yeah, physical. Yeah, 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 you'd get broke. I think that's one thing that wrestling, like it, it teaches you to go right to the edge and it's either, you know what, are you going to carry on or are you just going to give up and get yeah, broke? Like yeah. that's that's it. It's, that's it's it. a life lesson. Wrestling yeah, 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 is a life yeah, yeah. lesson. It is. It's, a, it's it. a one big sort of like grind it is session. Yeah. Completely. It's make or break you, like you said. Yeah. 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 So I'm thinking about training tomorrow and I'm thinking, <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking what I'm going to go through. Now though. Yeah. What's the difference you see in people now that come training from then? Okay. Um, honestly, just, on, just honestly, yeah, honestly, honestly. This new generation of guys now, yeah, compared to the guys that you know were training before, it's it's a different ball game altogether. Mm. Um, I've had to soften down the training. You have to. Yeah. There's only the the handful of elite guys who really want it for themselves yeah. that I can push yeah but generally as a club now it's it's probably working on about 30-40% of where we were that's interesting yeah why though is it that people are, are getting injured and, and staying off the lines too more long or I, th I think generally th there's so much distraction mm. around in the world now it's just the way society is now. Okay. I mean, you, you're talking like kids just sitting on yeah. PlayStations. You know, people. I mean, some of the kids I've heard that they, they think their friends are on Facebook, mm. kind of thing, and then, you know, but they're not going out physically yeah. you know, to socialize, etc. Okay. Yeah. But um, they think these, you know, people are kind of like really their friends on Facebook, and that. You know, they might have a hundred. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, and they'll say to the parents, "Oh, well, I've got friends." But it's not real. It's not real. It's not real. No. Yeah. So I think we're lacking uh, as this generation's coming. They're lacking the social environment. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. So they sit at home. Just yeah, just yeah. in their own world, in right? Their own Stuck world, into yeah, it. Yeah. So would you say that the engagement has dropped from what it was before, though? Could you still do decent numbers? Yeah, we. But it's hard work. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I always say, if you can run a wrestling club, you can run anything. Anything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wrestling. Because it's regarded as the toughest sport in the world. Yeah. By, by all the different I agree. Of, uh, yeah. governing bodies. Um, and well, yeah, we agree. Because we've been in that sort of, uh, like I say, environment. Yeah. But um, so that's why I, I'm not too sure how the other sports are doing. Mm. You know, uh, wrestling is not a glamorous sport as such. Yeah. Way. Yeah, it's just a hard it's sort real, of you know real grind. It's, it's hard work. There's not shortcuts to it. There's not. So maybe that's why you know it's so hard to run a, a wrestling club. As yeah, such. Uh, and other sports like boxing or like jujitsu, etc. They they they're just kind of yeah, yeah. They don't yeah. have to do much, but also they get pushed a lot by the the government and and different sporting organizations. Where I I don't I've never really saw the push. For, like growing up, never saw really wrestling. Um, obviously, in America and some places, it, it's a complete different thing. They really push the wrestling. Yeah, different ball game. America, uh, sort of Europe, Eastern Europe, Asia. Wrestling is huge. Huge, it's, it's massive. Yeah. Uh, it's it's kind of like the norm to be wrestling. Of course. So uh, we, you know, the UK here, it's a little bit sort of held back say wrestling. it is yeah, it's not the norm here so but we've pushed it for like 30 odd years 30 years yeah and still going strong are you, st are you seeing it are you seeing more acceptance on a wider scale are people understanding more about what more it is? and more um, i think wrestling itself has been helped by mma yes um, because wrestling is, is regarded as the best base for do MMA you agree fighting. i totally agree yeah why is it the best base it's so natural mm. uh, this is the most natural thing for even kids to do Pushing, pulling, coordination, balance, everything. It gives you True. everything. And True. it gives you that core strength that no other sport can give you. Got you. Yeah. You've seen it yourself. I so. saw it. Yeah, I know. I know. So I'm, trying to, stay, I'm yeah. trying to stay in the middle here. Yeah. Okay. I'm just thinking about um, MMA wrestlers that I've done. I'm just thinking heavyweight champion, obviously light heavyweight and heavyweight champion. Is it an Olympi former Olympian? So that's I mean, valid. If you just look at the UFC, which is the biggest MMA that's championship it, yeah. in the world, yeah. Um, most of the top champions they are, are wrestlers or have a very good background in wrestling. They are. Welterweight champion, wrestler, lightweight champion, wrestler, sambo, but yeah, wrestler. 
I think, if I'm not wrong, a few, a few years ago, maybe about three or four years ago, I think every title in the UFC was held by a wrestler. Yeah, I I'm think thinking even stage, now, yeah. other than middleweight, but even he's wrestling for the Australian um, national team. Right. So pretty much, that that's a valid case. If anybody wants to argue the fact that wrestling is the best base, um, what you have to do is look at the champions. We don't even need to debate that. Wow, interesting. But I guess the wrestling in MMA... You can control where the fight's going to a point. You could even use your wrestling to keep it standing if somebody wants to do that. Or if you're getting beat up on the feet, just take them down. Take them and down, then it's yeah. the control when you're on the ground, which is, I find, honestly, if you haven't tried wrestling, people, you need to try it at least once. It's, it's, it's insane, the things you can learn from it. Um, so, yeah, so just to, just to touch on that, really, have you, saw, have you definitely saw an influx of MMA fighters coming in and wrestling kind of going alongside... MMA and rising together? hundred percent. I'm nice. a lot of MMA guys who come. Um, you get a lot of like strikers as well, like boxers, etc. They come. Um, Jiu-Jitsu guys, they come. Yeah. Like, because wrestling just gives that little bit of benefit to to every other sport. It combines well with everything. Got you. Yeah, so in MMA, I mean, we, we, we're coaching a lot of MMA guys. Yeah. As, yeah, yeah as definitely. Know, yeah. So um, obviously it helps their game. Definitely. And there's a demand for it now. Yeah. Which never used to be in the past. That's great. That's yeah, great. So I'm guess, I'm guess, that's great for your club then, really. Yeah, it's brilliant right? for us. Um, but, you know, we, we, we're the only, or say, the, the highest level of wrestling club in, in the Midlands here. That's we're, huge. We're producing champions. That's we're the huge. only wrestling club of that caliber here. Producing champions. Yeah. I like so, it. Great. What makes a champion? From what you've saw. Yeah, at the end of the day, you know what is the the person needs to really want that goal. Mm. That's bottom line. Yeah. And anything from that lesser from there, yeah, you 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 know you you're, you're fighting yourself. Yeah. So if you really want something, hard work dedication it's 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 all there okay yeah it just depends on how much you you want it in uh, you know from our wrestling club the coaches are there the the uh training partners are there you know we're forever bringing more guys in um uh, you know as training partners uh guys who want to compete and reach those goals in wrestling or mma or whatever it is yeah so it's like everything's there yeah you, you cannot you cannot complain or you know for you're lacking something okay so it's down to you at the end of the day yeah i can't wrestle for you, these guys no more of course uh, but i can help them and provide everything they need to be champions nice nice so. the place that turns out champions all right then so what's next then what's next for wolverhampton wrestling club we are now uh, sort of we have been also yeah but we've, we've gone more into the community we've gone into schools um we gone deep into the community, you know, nice. um, this, this sort of like, the, you know, in, in the days of the past, yeah, there used to be a lot of youth clubs, etc. Yeah. You know, kids could do all sorts of different um, activities as such, yeah, without hanging out on, on the streets. We, we're using wrestling as wrestling in the community, nice. wrestling on the streets. It, it's a big project that we've started through Wolverhampton Wrestling Club as an academy to give these kids something to do something to yeah, do yeah yeah so somewhere to put their energy divert their energy love into and, and do better things love it so we, we've got a big push into that at the moment now okay yeah. and is that just in Wolverhampton right now um yeah but we are expanding um well I'll just give you a little um example um the Sikh temple that we train at Cannon Road and when did you when did you get into the Sikh temple that was then uh I think we've been training there for about 20 about 20 12 or 20 years okay wow yeah. okay so so the Sikh temple is as support is all throughout it's great, right? yeah so it's brilliant you know we have the gym there we have the wrestling mat there we have uh, sort of uh, football fields out there so we yeah, can train outdoors sure. whatever yeah so um yeah we've been well supported by uh, the Karen Crow Sikh temple and on top of that we are just engaging with nearly 200 Sikh temples around the country. Wow. Uh, headquarters being at Cannock Road uh, to introduce wrestling. 
200. Yeah, nearly wow. 200 Sikh temples who are when, in the National Committee. When is that hoping to roll out? We, we've um, set up an association okay. already, uh, based obviously here at our wrestling club. Um, and now we are just in the process of putting the pieces together and then offering and helping set up not just wrestling clubs but all different sports. Like sporting yeah, academies. Yeah, like sporting academies. That's yeah. huge. So the potential there is obviously huge. Huge. Yeah. Wow. I didn't know that. that that's that's going to be, yeah, <laughs> no, that's no, something. I kept that secret. Yeah, you yeah. did just for this podcast. Yeah, yeah. special really. No, that's going to be, that's going to be insane. And what else? What about, what can we expect from the fight team going forward? Um, I mean, we've got the, the next um, couple of months, we've got the British Championships and juniors, seniors. We've got a few competitions mm. um, that we need to sort of uh, be heading to. And we, yeah. we will. We've got a fight team of around about 15 uh, lads, juniors good. and seniors, yeah, nice. which is not bad. Oh, that's good. Come. Yeah, yeah. We teach over 150 kids in just um, Wolverhampton at that's the moment crazy. now. So, obviously, <laughs> producing these, these are sort of like just wrestlers. From the age of six onwards. Onwards, yeah. wow. Yeah. So, wow. you know, hoping for future champions from there. Also. Definitely, I'm yeah. sure. I have to keep it up. Um, that's great. What about you have started some sessions at the UTC as well? UTC Combat in West Brom. Interesting. Yeah. Um, formerly um, uh, in Erdington. Okay. Yeah, UTC Erdington. Um, they've just moved to West Brom now, and so I'm wrestling. Well, coaching there three times a week nice as well as Wolverhampton um, we also doing some work with the uh, British judo okay uh, yeah so, everywhere yeah, yeah. It's, it's, you it's, like it's everywhere now so, that's uh, good yeah uh, wrestling just expanded it's getting yeah, huge yeah, it's, it's getting, getting huge. big right getting very very big um, there's something happening I believe in about three four years time in Birmingham maybe something yeah you might have heard something <laughs> yeah. About that, yeah. Yeah, Are you hoping to get some quite a few? We're we're, we're looking at um, four four serious four to five serious guys and nice. uh, heading for the Commonwealth Games. Commonwealth Games, yeah. that's going to be which is huge. on our doorstep. Which exactly. is you know, it'll be great. Have to make a stamp in yeah, there, right? Yeah, definitely, have to, definitely. Have to. So the training starts now. As you're expanding so much, though, don't you feel the need to bring on more coaches? And is, is it hard for them to understand? So, is from when you was training, is there any people that are still around coaching alongside you, like from them, that understand that kind of training that you was going through in the journey? Um, my brother does. Okay. Uh, yeah, my, my, my dad obviously pops in every now and again nice. just to see in the talent now. Nice. But I think they get a little bit frustrated, which I also <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think it took me about three years to, to overcome that frustration of... Why can't they do this? Why can't, yeah, what's going on? Yeah, well, yeah. Know, I've seen all sorts, uh, you know, feigning injuries and all, all, all these sort of things. That's thinking, crazy. You know, different. This is, yeah, different, totally different. It, it helped me sort of uh, understand, you know, this is a big change. Yeah. This is happening. But it took me three years. Three, it took you yeah, a while to get used to that. Yeah. Used to that yeah. That's Mark, interesting. You know? Um, I'll, I'll give you an example, which I can't see that happening nowadays in, you know, in, in many sports, but I smashed my cartilage four days before my national championships, British championships, well, okay, going, yeah. going a while back now. I trained hard, I just wanted to put that one extra session in and that's when I did it. I was on crutches until Saturday morning. My physio said to me, Look, I know you've competed many times before with injuries, etc. But this it's time different. you just can't. Yeah, yeah, you've smashed your cartilage to bits. He did an operation. So on the Saturday morning, because I've already entered the championships, <laughs> yeah. I strapped up my knee. I had very, li very little movement. Uh, I couldn't straighten my leg. I couldn't bend it. I was gutted. I lost one fight. I finished off with a bronze medal. You finish with a bronze medal. I was medal. gutted. You wouldn't believe. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. How much fights did you have on this on the Saturday? I uh, had six fights. You lost one fight yeah, with you, no cartilage. With, with no cartilage in that. How, how do you do that? How could you? That's crazy. I, I couldn't understand how I lost. <laughs> That's crazy. So, you know, it's just going back to the... the 
the mindset of yeah. old school to, to now. You could never see that now. No, you wouldn't. No. You wouldn't see it now. So when I come off the mat, when obviously then, you know, went home, etc. my knee was obviously a lot of pain. Done, right? I'm back on crutches again. <laughs> I just come off the crutches just, just for that one day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> got your bronze medal and then got back in the game. Wow, you're right though. I, I mean, I'd be very, very shocked <laughs> to see that these days. I mean, even to the point of top caliber fighters, they're pulling out for fights yeah, yeah. for way less than that. No, of so. course, yeah. It was just, the, like I said, the mindset of the, the, the club. You know, being a, a sort of like a bloodline sport. How it was, yeah, yeah. yeah it's just it's the different. way it was, yeah, yeah. It's different. So, I fractured my collarbone once. I just going down another story. I, in the competition, I didn't know. Um, I just carried on training. Just carried on doing. <laughs> yeah. I, in I, competition. I, in competition, I felt it. I just carried on throughout the tournament. Um, it was an international, and then it was only like six months later. Um, I was having a, a bit of uh, pain in my chest, so yeah. my dad took me to the hospital. He said, "Look, let's just go and check it out." They said, your chest is fine, your breathing is okay, yeah, but do you know you've got a fractured collarbone? <laughs> this is like six months, so it's too, it's too late now, <laughs> so. <laughs> did, those, did these injuries, though, hinder your progress moving forward? Yeah, I used to be, um, I, think, I think, looking back at it, I trained too hard. Yeah. Yeah, it was a case of, I didn't want to rest. We, none of us wanted to rest. Even seven days, we were just like... You're just you just on know, it, on it, on it. it. Yeah, because it was just the way it was. So do you think because of the more access to information that people have, yeah. right now maybe they're over-diagnosing themselves, <laughs> but they know or they think that, okay, I'm training four, weeks, four days a week wrestling and I go to the gym two days a week. Like I know I need that day for my body to recover and if they feel something niggly do a rest but then they might go on the internet and it says something and they'll be like oh it says three weeks without any walking so I guess it's a fine line where you was too hard but <laughs> right now it might be too soft maybe in the next year we'll find a balance find and everyone balance, will be yeah. perfect and, and we'll bring these Commonwealth games no, it's, a, it's a good point that you make there because yeah I can see that yeah yeah sometimes um, I mean you know unless it's a serious injury in the club or whatever um, guys will come up to you and say, Coach, can I have a bit of tape because I've done this yeah. or I've done that? And I'm like, There's the bag, use it and get back on the map. That's it, get back get on back, it. Yeah. Oh, you've yeah, done yeah, that yeah. to me. I've got no time for yeah, excuses. No, no, yet. you don't. You yeah. don't. You yeah. Train like just or go just go sit on the side. Yeah, yeah, on the side. yeah, yeah. Just get on with it. Yeah. But <laughs> again, this is the, these are the guys that are competing in the series. Of course, of course. I couldn't say that to Yeah, yeah. Like a kid that's just like, Okay, no, great. All right, so yeah, that pretty much um, finishes our, our interview, Ranjan. It's been a, it's been a great one, really, to hear the journey of the Wolverhampton Wrestling Club, starting in the living room, and now now look, we're doing big things, and hopefully, Commonwealth Games will be huge, and something can happen there. Before we go, though, this is the Words of a Warrior podcast, and it really is about the fights that different people have faced in life, and obviously. We, we've touched on kind of the journey throughout and I think wrestling has had to fight just to become a almost, I mean, it, I wouldn't say it's a mainstream sport, but I guess it was a fight for survival and to be recognised as a sport. And the last, I'd say, at least year and a half, I've saw personally a lot of progress in wrestling on a bigger scale. People know about it more. And as you said, that's due to wrestling. Um, despite, I mean, coming away from wrestling, we all have our personal fights that we go through, whether they're injuries or something greater, like um, the young people, it could be. I don't want to put words into your mouth. But Ranjit, right now I want to ask you, what are you fighting for? What am I fighting for? Yeah, what is that one thing that you're really driving for? What are you really fighting for in life right, right now? Right now. With my sport? Could be life, it doesn't have to be sport. I think my life is wrestling. Mm. Because I've been involved with it since a very early age, I've seen all the um, the benefits from it. Yeah. Not just physically, not just physically, but mentally. Um, you you, but you just a better person, I suppose. Yeah. You know, you, like I said, we touched on you know being humble, respectful. It comes from these kind of sports. It's not just wrestling, but sports in general. Right. You know, the harder the sport, I find the harder. The, sorry, the harder the sport the more humble you are, the yeah. more respectful you are, because yeah. the, you've got guys alongside you, you know their journeys too. Mm. You know how hard they've trained, mm. you know, and it, it, it's a case of having a lot of discipline. 
it's not, it's not for the normal person to it's be. Not, yeah, yeah, right. it's, not, it's not for everyone. He, yeah, it's not for everyone. So in regards to wrestling as a sport then, with wrestling on a, on a whole, what specifically are you fighting for? Me, I think because of my passion in the sport, yeah, uh, it's a way of life. Like I said, for me, I want to spread the word. Spread the word. Yeah, I want Get to spread the word of wrestling and uh, what benefits it has. Yeah. Um, it, it's just, like I say, it, it's something that I've experienced all my life. And, okay. uh, you know, to build somebody up or to pass, pass my experience over to them, yeah. make them better. Uh, this is all I want. Love uh, it. This goes from like the duties all the way to seniors. Whether it's just participation in the sport, you know, um, and you see the joy on kids' faces yeah. when they're having fun and everything. You know, it's it's really good, uh, and they come up to you and you know, thanks, coach. You yeah. know, he's high five and stuff. It's it's, it's it great. Yeah, it means a lot. And uh, because you know, there's no there's no money here for, yeah. for wrestling. Yeah, you know, he, um, so the, the the enjoyment you get is is. It's what huge. it is. You're right. Yeah. It's huge. Yeah. So all the way from participation to elite athletes who go on, you know, to world levels and compete and win titles and stuff. Uh, this is it. That's it. This That's is my fight. life. Yeah. That's your fight. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So nice. Love it. Love it. Love it. So where can people find um, Wolverhampton Wrestling Club? What platforms are you are you on currently? Um, we're on uh, Instagram Wolver Wrestling. My personal one is Ranch Singh zero uh, four. Uh, we're on uh, website is Wolverhampton Wrestling Club uk, Facebook Wolverhampton Wrestling Club. So yeah, it's typing Wolverhampton yeah, Wrestling Club. Wolverhampton and something will come up, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. There's, there's no others, so yeah. Do get us. involved. Do get involved. Um, what days does it run on in Wolverhampton? It's uh, Tuesday, Thursday evenings, six thirty start. Saturday mornings, um, kids are on at ten till half eleven, and seniors half eleven onwards. Love it. Love it. So. Please, please do go and check them out. Um, if you're in the local community, please support Wolverhampton Wrestling Club and bring your children down, let them know and, and this sport. And let's help Ranjit with his fight of, of really reaping the benefits of a sport such as wrestling. There's different martial arts that you can take them to. Wrestling is a bit different. Maybe I'm a bit biased, but hey, how that's how it goes. Thank you, everybody, for joining me on another episode of the words of a warrior podcast make sure you subscribe leave a review on itunes leave a five-star rating you know we deserve it and yeah until next time i'm out